It's warm today, but I wanted to look at some cards, <clears throat> as if we haven't done that enough yet, right? But I have some decks here, quite random, because the thing is, when I have a feeling at least, most of all when I was starting out, talking about pip decks, but for instance, the most known pip decks, which is the Marseille system, I believe, right? Could be. <laughs> Not actually sure about that. But the Marseille deck, when we use a deck like that, which has pips, as in non, non scenic pips, some people say non illustrated, but then the card would be blank, right? <laughs> I've made that mistake in the past, but non scenic pips. So very abstract, not a lot to go on. Although that is very freeing at the same time. But either you know or you will find out. The thing is that usually when we work with decks like these, we think of a type of method that's very legit, I'll say, where we just add things together. We add the element and the number. And then there's also, you know, some extra intuition stuff or whatever you can think of that equals or that matches that energy. And there's, of course, many more ways to get a message from a pip card. Something that I don't often hear readers talk about is the imagery. And I know it's, it takes a while to get used to it, it takes a while to get to know your cards, it takes a while to recognize immediately that's the six or the seven of wands, or that is the seven or the nine of wands, or swords. You know, especially those the two suits look a lot alike, but after a while you you don't need to look at the number on the side if if it's even there because in traditional Marseille the there is no number on the coins for instance uh, just a funny funny quirky thing that I love but there is no reason to look at the number on the side there's no there you you won't need to count the amount of wands or rods or staffs or or swords and you'll just recognize it as a type of well a symbol in itself and I really want to do that because there's a lot of information that you can get from that because you see in the Marseille there are plants that grow a certain way and they look a certain way it took me a long time to realize that this actually looked like the planet Venus, like that, or female symbol, or even better, looks like a handheld mirror. And that suits this card, doesn't it? The Seven of Pentacles, you're faced with a choice, what are you going to do? with the work that you've done. There's much more to it, but you know what I mean? <clears throat> it's like the moment of mirror, it's an active card, so what am I going to do? And the sevens are always strange to me, but I've translated that into you go inward first, and then that gives you that boost forwards. Just like with the chariot, where the chariot is all about momentum and you know, going forward and all that stuff, but the chariot is often depicted standing still. So what does that mean? So that's the whole, you know, the conclusion that I made for myself. And there's, of course, a beautiful way to express that in a reading. So this, this mirror, I mean, makes sense, right? So I've done that. I've picked out some cards where I feel there's an extra mes message in there like that that you can actually use because Khodorovsky said it and I agree um, tarot is the art of seeing of looking learning to see, learning to look and so all of the details, everything matters if in a reading something jumps out at you so strongly and it's just a little you don't even know exactly what it is. It's something, a little squiggle in the drawing that can have actually 
uh, a lot of meaning. I mean, you just add that on top on top of the knowledge that you have of the cards. I am a little bit uh, strict about you need to have the base, and then off of that you can add your own flow and intuition and all that stuff. But you know, it I do feel that it matters, and yeah, it can just mean so many things. And even though at the beginning you might feel a little bit silly <laughs> like for instance these two cards this is my own deck and this is the Triomphe de la Luna Paradoxical by Patrick Valenza you can see I actually even added, added the, the, the drop of blood underneath the flower but I maybe it's obvious and I've picked out the, the cards that I felt were less obvious, although I did keep in some obvious ones, just in case you didn't think about it. We don't know. We're just looking at beautiful pictures here, aren't we? Uh, this card looks so much like a flower that is being kept from aging underneath a dome, a protective dome. Like, for instance, you have that in The Little Prince, Le Petit Prince by uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. You have that in Beauty and the Beast. And, you know, that's like probably in other stories as well because it's a thing, it's, it's a, a symbol. And keeping something protected under glass keeps it beautiful but, and it keeps it from aging and it's not natural in a way. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, talk this much about every card and I, I could keep going here, but you see what I mean? Like, these swords, um, and you can see the, the serious inspiration with the handles, because normally in Marseille the swords don't have handles. Um, they all cross and, and, and close this, this enclosure, this opening, or you could even obviously see in all the, in all the swords, you could obviously see, every time you could see like a Vesca Pisces, or you could see a female reproductive parts. And uh, what's also cool, oh yeah, you can actually do that with these two cards put together even though they're from different decks. Don't forget to look at the cards one by one, but then also make a sequence. That also works with the Marseille, okay? Not only with other decks, for instance, the Rider Waite Smith deck, which I love, by the way, but then you, it's easy to see, to look at the background, you know, to, to like, find a story in that sense. But then here, there's also a way to do it, and once you see it, it makes perfect sense. For instance, two swords cards next to one another makes a full circle. You see that? They link together. So what does that mean? I mean, in this case, it doesn't mean anything because it's two four of sorts put together. <laughs> but, yes, that's the type of symbolism I want to talk about. And then I also took a little bit more freedom here and there just to show you what I think it means because there I have, I have, I have, I have a few, I have different decks and I feel that my collection is quite, goes in different directions. So, let's look at some cards. Here's the seven of coins in the Patrick Valenza's deck. The eight of coins. Now, I really like um, linking this one to the Rider Waite Smith Eight of Pentacles because in the Rider Waite Smith Eight of Pentacles we see a guy working. And it's about not only routine, but actually making something better, really getting better. It's not about repetition, it's about getting better. And you see the, the eight pentacles, they are on top of one another, most of them against a tree trunk. And so they do go up, the energy does go up. And here you can see that in, first of all, the eight is, a perfect, is the perfect number, right? So there's every, every, there are no gaps in the card. Every part is filled. It's perfect, it's full. I can't think of the name of that game, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but look at the plants between the, pe the pentacles or the coins. Looks like a ladder. Looks like a ladder to me. There's that meaning that you can put onto here, explaining it's about 
yeah, improving yourself. Some of these I know I've shown in other videos, but this is the video, I guess. And I know, by the way, that I did miss some cards, some of them on purpose, some of them not. But if I show any deck and you feel that I've missed a, a big one, please let me know. I'm, I'm also interested in, in getting deeper into this. This in Marseille, now you see Patrick's deck is very uh, ornate, has a lot of extra stuff that I love but usually it's a little bit more simple and you can see turning it this way it looks like an eye two of swords it looks like an eye so what does that mean to you? Hmm? what is that how does that help in the message here look at these plants looks like a little figure doesn't it with its head open with the little arms little legs and then the head this of course well for you who know Thoth, um, <clears throat> I have the deck right here, but I, I don't think I have enough time to look it up, to look up this card. This is the traditional, I mean in my book at least, the traditional two of uh, coins card. And it looks like a stamp, it looks like your own signature, and there's a banner, that's what it is. And so in the Rider Waite Smith, Pixie made it into a lemniscate, a actual, like that. And then uh, Lady Frida Harris made it into a snake that's also forming a lemniscate. Here, the Nine of Cups looks a lot to me like a trophy cabinet. And, you know, I mean, I don't see... I'm actually working really hard to make one system, my own system. And I know I, each card of every deck brings out something else special that is special, that is the voice of that deck, I guess, or that voice of that deck through me. But um, I am linking the cards together. Like, for instance, the Nine of uh, Cups in the Thoth, which is, it's May, yes, which is my month card, the card of this month. Um, looks very much like this, but there's more energy, I guess. There's more, 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 more movement, more things happening, which is very thought. But then link it also to the image in the Rider Waite Smith, which is that guy sitting really proud of himself, waiting for his guests, guests to guests to arrive, with the nine cups almost in a rainbow on a table, you know, waiting for his friends to or family or whatever to come. And so that is also accomplishment. That is also that trophy cabinet. Even though they are actually cups, they really do look like trophies also, don't they? So it is a prize. It is a like, yeah. Then here I already said it. This is just the Eight of Swords. Um, it looks a lot like a female reproductive organ. And uh, with these drops of blood, at least in this version they look like blood I don't know what they look like in a regular Triomphe de la Luna but yeah that kind of adds that time of the month maybe yeah interesting okay let's keep going yeah I pulled out these two cards just to show you that I'm going a little bit further than the simple this is a cross and this is a triangle and there's already more to these cards than just that but yeah um, at the same time, there's also this. I really have this thing right now, well, I always had it, but now more than ever, where I like to imagine things in 3D. So imagine this green cross that we see here folding together, and that would become, you fold it together, every side folds together, becomes like a point, a flat bottom, uh, an obelisk shape with the point. And I mean, yeah, you have an obelisk in the Four of Swords. <laughs> then, um, then here, of course, there's so much sacred geometry in the Thoth, but here as well, there is that obvious um, 
well, a lot going on, but then in the way that these six swords are uh, drawn together are, are what's the word? I'm talking about composition and arrangement. Are arranged? You know what I mean. It looks a lot like the flower of life. Uh, I knew it. It's the seed of life. I just checked it quickly on my phone to make sure because it didn't sound correct. It's the seed of life. Yeah, the one where you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles. That's what I thought. Didn't sound right. It's not the flower of life, it's the seed of life. And there's more of that in other decks. Uh, I saw that yesterday evening when I went through my cards. I didn't go through every deck because I have 30 something. Um, but anyway, let's keep, keep going. <laughs> It really does look in the way that these cups are arranged. I couldn't think of the name in English, but it's hourglass. Looks like an hourglass. I don't feel that I'm really making the difference between what the artist and maker of the deck meant to do and the thing that I found myself. Because after all, we don't know everything. But here it's really obvious. It's the tree of life. Again... Yes, here our ruin really looks like, actually the Eight of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith looks like bars, looks like a prison, looks like a fence. I really like this one, this is actually the uh, Eight of Swords in the Thoth, the reason why I made this video, <laughs> because I realized that this looks a lot like train tracks. And then here, because of the handles of the swords, it looks like it's the end, like this, the stop, the place where the, the train stops and cannot go any further at the end of the tracks. So I thought that was really interesting. Now in here, um, we can find <clears throat> one big torus, you know, that cosmic donut and also a few little ones. This card, the Seven of Cups, looks a lot to me in shape like um, the uterus and the female reproductive system. Hera already talked about this snake. Now, both of these, although the four looks more like a wheel than the eight, do look like uh, wheels, right? So it's supposed to turn or it's supposed to move, it's supposed to do something. This again, ha yeah, reminds me a little bit of female reproductive but also it's hard to do research when you don't when you're looking for some some things uh when you're looking for the name of something like it also reminds me so much like of a symbol is it an a chemical symbol is it a rune is it a a zodiac sign a, a planet sign i don't know but this shape help me out Now this, although I know there would be more than five fingers, really does look like a hand, and then the skeleton of a hand, the fingers. Yeah? Here's the trophy cabinet, or a big fat fountain, or something luxurious, at least. A lot of luxury in the thoth. Then, of course, there's like the super obvious things, like, um, can't miss it, these are all... You see, they all have the point facing down, pentagrams. Yeah? So that's interesting. Let's move on to the Rider Waite Smith. This Eight of Cups, first of all, looks like the person is 
either abandoning the project or off to find a ninth cup. And it kind of looks like teeth in a way. The card is so dark, so there is already that, I don't know, doom thing about it. Um, I can't help sometimes but to think of this card when I look at it, think of it like a skull. And they, these are the teeth. And then there's a tooth missing. And even though there isn't anything else in the card, there's no eyes, the nose, you know, there's... doesn't look like it at all. I, there is something about it, don't you agree? Tree of Life. Here, yes, I remember Lisa from Mindful Tarot talking about this card. Because... There's no symmetry in this card at all, even though it's the six. It's supposed to be uh, the most balanced number, right? The most balanced card in the, in the suit of pentacles. And yet, it does, it, it is reminiscent of a scale. Because this side is weighed lower or heavier than that side. You see? Kind of like, scale is tipping like that. So I thought that was a really good one, and I didn't forget that. This is obvious, but I will tell you anyway. It looks like a doorway, standing in a doorway. These nine swords definitely look like a ladder. Here's another one that I don't really know. It's different from Marseille. These five pentacles, they look like a tree, I guess, but there's also something else to it, and I just cannot put my finger on it what it is. Just like with the Three of Swords in the Thoth. What, what is this shape? What does this remind me of? I don't know. <laughs> Here, of course, the guy made a fence. This looks very much like either a family crest or a sacred heart. I think I included this one just to say, look at these two wands aimed at his uh, parts. I don't know, I guess it just emphasizes the meaning of you're feeling a little bit vulnerable, <laughs> perhaps. Okay, this is just a detail. I don't really know what to, m I do know what to make of it, but it's, it is a detail and I'm going a little bit way out there, <clears throat> way out there, but you're used to that by this point, right? Look at this landscape. It's not flat like in Holland. You actually have mountains, like for instance in France. And then look, these swords are um, are there in a way where they kind of like mimic the landscape. And then here, the last few swords are like the could look like the highest point of the mountain, of the mountains in the background. That to me means that even though, I mean, there's a little story about this card, it can mean different things, right? But just looking at the imagery, looks like something bad has happened and you're going to find a better life somewhere else. Really short and bluntly said. But the fact that these swords, you take them with you, it's not just baggage, emotional baggage, or baggages in trauma. It's actually lessons, life lessons, and you have to take them with you. And without them, you wouldn't be where you are now, and without them, you wouldn't be where you are going towards. So the fact that they make the highest point in the, uh, in the background, in the scene that we can see, within this frame makes it so that it was necessary for these things to happen, for these things to be said. Um, yeah, it will make you do even better things. It will make you go even further in life, something like that. But, um, I added this one because the next deck is the Druid Craft and here there really isn't so much to say, but you compare it to the Druidcraft, at first glance you might say, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is in the swords themselves mostly, that here they are way more fanned out, open, 
than here. And the fact that they are fanned out, it's the element of air, uh, and they look like a fan, like, a, like that. And so that to me brings me to, even though it's a quite dramatic imagery, it does bring me towards um, the positive side of this card, which is which you can more easily find in pip decks. These aren't pip decks, but you know what I mean? It's like, well, there's a whole lot of energy, a lot of air energy at this moment, and I don't know, a little bit more open, like breaking thought patterns is often around the nine and the ten of swords. And this makes it so, yeah, a little bit more stretched, as if your brain is a little bit more stretched. Maybe that's it. This is obviously a beautiful Three of Swords. It's the Awen, which is a druidic symbol with different meanings, I found out. But it suits it really well. This symbol is also in the back, well, in lots of places, but in the these Will Worthington decks, it's also in the back of the animal druid, animal oracle, something like that cards. Yes, very helpful, Anna. These Ten of Pentacles is interesting because it's not in the shape of a Tree of Life. I mean, what would a Tree of Life be doing here with the Druids, right? Um, but I found it interesting that all of these Pentacles are really scattered around the card. And that, to me, yeah, gives me the information that it's not just one thing. It's all about generations and... Um, yeah, I don't know, like passing things on and it's okay if it's all scattered around because you give little bits of yourself, little pieces of yourself away. Okay, the deck that is doing the exact same thing that I'm explaining now. Pagan Other Worlds. This is a deck that is beautiful, great quality and everything, but I don't like working with it. I'm not at this point where I still, I'm not at the point where I um, can get rid of it. I don't feel like I should yet because every time I hold it, it's like, yes, it is very beautiful. But there's something about it and I know what it is. It's the minimalism. It just doesn't work for me. And I like Marseille. Okay. So here, this is the 10. I don't even, yeah. It's the 10 of swords. And it looks a lot like those wooden fences that you have in a garden where the plants can grow up against. But because it's steel or iron, or I don't know, because it's swords, uh, it looks a lot scarier. And it has that vibe of an abandoned, haunted castle. This is interesting. One of the swords in this boat is actually helping the rowing. Um, I mean, that's what it looks like. And that's cool. There's an idea that can help you move forward. There's a lot of structure in this deck, whereas it's not, you know, placed like nature would place it. It's really placed in a very deliberate way. And this is, again, like bringing something to the material world, maybe. These looks look like little wheels. Um, if one starts turning, they all turn. If one stops, they all stop. This um, Ten of Wands looks a lot like the other Ten of Wands that we see. But this one, because there are no people, actually reminds me of a tree. These could be the roots, this could be the tree itself. So that to me brings the message of they might be cut, but there's also the, at least the potential or the idea or the inspiration for new growth. Yeah. This is very much stepping up, getting better, getting results, right? Like, a, like stairs. This Five of Wands looks a lot like 
uh, someone tried to make a structure, but then added the fifth one, which is needed to make, make the structure, and then the whole thing fell down. Here again, that's why I picked it, looks a lot like the seed of life. Now a little bit more because these are actually circles rather than lines of the swords. But, you know, it's really about what do you do with that. This, which usually is a rainbow or something like that, something in, a, in this shape at least, this looks a lot more like a crown. Just one more deck to go because, while unknown, a deck I don't use a lot, but when I do, it's good. This also looks like an eye, looks like an opening that is made. The way that these ones are, are arranged on the card, the way that the composition is made, looks a lot like, like that, right? Like the potential. This is very similar to, I believe, the Six of Wands in the Wildwood, um, which is like an explosion, and, and they all open up in a different direction. So that makes the shape of flowers, makes the shape of, quite literally, when uh, lightning strikes in the ground, there's a little bit of a... Pfft. This is very obvious, but just in case you hadn't seen it in this card, it looks like steps. <laughs> I believe this is, this is my favorite card in this deck, together with maybe the Seven of Wands. But this one has, oof, I, I don't like the change. I also have the second edition of The Wild Unknown because I'm a crazy tarot lady, but um, this is, this looks much better to me, probably because I like symmetry. Very symmetrical. Here, I believe I already talked about this card in another video, but I have n I'm not I'm not sure now. Anyway, there's a lot of trick of perspective or whatever you call that um, in this deck, which I do like because it's kind of trippy. Do you see these pentacles as lights, for instance, that are hung up against the corner of a building, like that, or do you see them as I don't know something that is um, arranged in the corner of a room. Whatever you see that day has meaning. Looks like a road. And this one, probably obviously, but obvious, but I don't know. In a right away Smith, you could say that the Five of Cups is the mourning card, as in someone died. And in the wild unknown, it's it looks much more like the Five of Pentacles has that role, the typical cards, you know. Um, this looks like a necklace of a woman dressed in black, and she's holding a rose. Just in case you hadn't seen that, but I believe everyone has seen that at this point. Then there's these three birds. And then there's a, a question I wanted to ask about this card, which is very nightmare and, and, and strange. Look at the, just the swords, because that's what, we've, what we're doing initially, right? We're looking at just the suit things, how they are drawn onto the card, drawn in the card, and then also sometimes what they actually represent. But this shape, like that, and then one like that, what does it look like? Is it like some, some type of antenna or something? That's what I'm thinking now. What do you think? Okay, yeah, I mean, like I said, there are more cards, but I did actually show you everything that I wanted to show you. I mean, I just love this stuff, and I don't know what to say. I just hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>